Hi, everybody. Just give everybody a second uh, to join. But um, I am really keen to get us started as we've got lots to cover. Um, so a few seconds and we'll get going. It's one minute past one now. So hi everyone and thank you for taking the time to join us today. I mean, I've even wore a blazer in my kitchen for the occasion, so very special. Um, just some general housekeeping. So time dependent, uh, you will have the opportunity for questions at the end, but feel free to use the chat at the side to submit questions throughout as this will be monitored by the team. We're hoping to bring some real energy and interest in what's been a tough week, maybe year for the country. So yes, hopefully we can do that today. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Melissa and I'm one of the regional directors here at Grace. And as part of this role, I cover pharmaceutical and health as a practice area across a number of Grace customers. My background is also within pharmaceutical projects and change. So working on a number of initiatives and innovations as a PMO and a project manager before moving into Grace HQ on a permanent basis around three years ago. I'm delighted to introduce to you today AstraZeneca Programme Director Phil Williams. It's a real privilege to have him here today and I'm so grateful for the time that he has dedicated to this webinar given the crucial COVID-19 related projects he is pivotal to at the moment. So thanks again, Phil. Um, we have worked with Phil for over a year now on the Digital Labs programme. So a real front runner in the innovation of lab technology and something that Phil will be telling us more about a little bit later. Phil's a real advocate for early talent and what we do here at Grace and it really is a pleasure to work with him. So without further ado, I will hand over to Phil now. Thank you. Excellent. <coughs> Thank you for that introduction, Mel. That is greatly appreciated. Um, like I say, the vast majority of you don't know who I am, um, but I just want to introduce myself. So I am a, a, a programme manager that has been involved with Grace for only just a year now. And I just want to go through a story of what, how I've been engaging with Grace and the journey we've been on together to help deliver the, the transformation that's happening within AstraZeneca. Can we have the next slide, please? Excellent. So next one after that, please. So yeah, we've got a bit of a background, a bit of a story to tell today with regards to the digital lab and the effects in the future that we have in the laboratories within AstraZeneca. And then we've got a, a case study at the end of a specific individual, which could be any of the Grace employees that have uh, come to work within my team uh, within this programme. So uh, can I have the next slide, please? So long service award for me, 28 years of project programme management within the pharmaceutical and healthcare sector. Uh, my current day job is I am the digital lab IT programme director and also for a program called Project IOS, which you will better known as the National COVID Testing Centre, which is a collaboration between AstraZeneca, GlaxoSmithKline and the University of Cambridge, currently testing the COVID samples for the whole of the UK. Next slide, please. So Digital Lab, where did this come from? So there was an initiative at AstraZeneca called Lab for Life. Now, this is where we were based in Sweden. They were trying to work differently in laboratories, more collective, more collaboration together. And this program altered the physical layout and footprint of many of our laboratories to make this a possibility. But as this program came to a conclusion, there was a lot of other further opportunities that involved technology, the understanding of science, the workflows that they were following. So out of that situation, Digital Lab was born to try and create the lab for the future within AstraZeneca. So we've had a great big program um, that when I took over was struggling for identity. There was a lot of tasks, a lot of issues with it with regards to being lost in methodology, too much work. How can we simplify this? And so what we did, we created a section with four work, sorry, with five work streams in. And the way we've progressed these is to try and give these individual areas an identity of what we were trying to do, deliver and achieve. So here's the screen to hopefully lay out a typical lab scene for you, where we have scientists carrying out experiments and the information that they need to help do their job. 
So optimizing science applications. There are many, many uh, applications within AstraZeneca. We've got two and a half thousand that the laboratory scientists use. And these are showing their age, not communicating well together. So we set up a work stream to, to look at how we could utilize this process better, rather than having to cut and paste things, try and make this flow a bit better, improving the, the time it, it takes to do some of these experiments and saving time for the scientists. And, getting rid of human error. So that is what the optimizing science application space is about. Modernizing lab computers. We, as you can imagine, you know, to replace all the stock within AstraZeneca, we've got over 3000 lab inst uh, instrument PCs. Some are older than others. And the older the machine, the slower it gets, the less performance, less capability. We can't keep up with the new application. So our program was brought in as well to modernize this estate, bring it to make sure we had a life cycle management capability. So keep things up to date, keep things modern and get the best out of the facilities that we have. We have creating, uh, sorry, dis, dis, Digitise an experiment right up, it's easy for me to say. Um, this is all about the scientists still using a notebook, paper and pen within the laboratories, having to come out of the laboratories to be contactable, to be on Teams, to be on email, to work in that environment because the contamination issues are taking a personal device in and out. But this is in this area, we brought in new technologies, new tablets, new you know, smartphones with information on to record people's voices, to give people access that they can you know to their emails that can be more productive while waiting for the an experiment to run its natural course then we've got creating accessible lab data 3000 instruments produce a lot of data it's a massive amount of technology and we're not utilizing it we can't see that so we're taking this data now from its source and bringing it into a data lake that the data analysts can actually model and try and predict the outcomes of experiments going forward so a huge data program for data files and imaging and so much more and then we have transforming lab it service this is a bit the scientists actually see so being a scientist in a lab you have a problem you want you don't want to have issues resolving your problems you want to talk to somebody go and see somebody have a, a more interactive service so it used to be break fix but now it's a more proactive session where we have new resources in the labs that are looking after this so this is how we've structured digital lab and the, the makeup of all the 20 and the 57 programs on projects we have within the capability next slide please so the size of Digital Lab, $14 million global program, 300 laboratories, 3,000 scientists that use multidiscipline, so we don't even have the luxury of the same skill sets within the scientists to deal with. Over 3,000 instruments from hundreds of different vendors, so how do we get this data from them? My team is 62 resources spread across six countries. So we have the US, we have the UK, we have Sweden, we have Chennai in India, we have Guadalajara in Mexico, and we also have Russia, all within the team that we need to talk to and communicate on a daily basis. Digital Lab is also a very high profile program and investment within AstraZeneca. This is in our top 20 programs. Now, this is not just an IT program, this is within the whole of AstraZeneca. Our new global research center in Cambridge, that is on the same list. So that's the scale, that's the visibility of the work and the profile this is happening. So we need the right people to be able to do this. And then alongside this, along comes a pandemic. Just when you've got the whole thing planned out, how do you operate? How do you be flexible? All your priorities change and alter. And the method within any program is seen as big oil tankers that will deliver something two, three, four years time. So we have to implement a new way of working to implement small and scale fast, get it right in one area and then grow. And that was the aspiration for the team. Now, the image you see on the slide here from day one of this taking over this program, I asked the same question. How many laboratories are there? Nobody in my team could tell me this information. Oh, well, it's different in Sweden. It's different in America. It's different in the UK. But the only person that's produced this information for me was Curtis. Now, Curtis has come in from Grace as he started off as a business analyst and he was able to answer this question for me. So this is why I love this sort of you know, utilising the Grace team so much. They, they don't take no for an answer. It's not 
not in their nature is they come to resolve problems and that is what he did he managed to sit down it's a simple view every dot on there is an IT instrument with a computer attached to it and he knows where in the world it is and what state it is so that's the yeah nobody else could provide it in my team so he is my go-to person with any information I need within the program now the next slide please so what do I need within my program? I need project managers, I need business analysts, product owners, solution architects, data engineers, technology engineers, scientists. But most importantly, I need people who care. Somebody, I don't want somebody to fill seats for me because we can't go into the office anyway, so we can't sit on those seats. We want people who want to do this work. And here's on the right hand side, this image here is about the, out of the 57 initiatives we are running, we're doing time saving, we're enabling scientists, we're improving our science, the experience of the scientists in the lab, we're reducing scientific risk, we're saving money, and we're making compliance with regulatory standards as well. So all vital things for, you know, for digital lab to deliver, because without this, we, you know, the future of our labs is uncertain. We need to grow, we need to improve, we need to embrace what are the challenges for tomorrow. So getting this right, helps us with those positions for tomorrow. Next slide, please. What my team, or the great team, has achieved. I do take ownership for this team because they, you know, they are, they're not a separate entity. They're not a different from any other person in my team. They're there to add value. Now, within our project management office, we started off lost in the methodology. So we managed to understand that, take that step back, create new ways of working, create the work stream models, go on a, this start small scale fast with a proof of concept and pilots and rollout. So we stop the, the approach of the oil tanker that's not going to deliver anything. So bringing that in and they've controlled the finances, they have access to the budgets to see what we're spending money on. Are we on track? Are we forecasting there? And also introducing quality management, which I'm absolutely passionate about. And Josh was part of that, having those ideas of understanding the agile capability, of what we needed to do and empowering to the capability to talk to senior people who have far greater experience, and making sure that they were towing the line properly and rather than cutting corners, he was the one setting the standard for the quality management area. And he brought in a quality manager for me to, to look after that role. So you empower somebody from grace and they'll empower and they'll accept the challenge you put in front of them. Business analysis workflows, support services, understanding what's going on. And also as well in the IT service area, the policies and procedures. Vanessa's done a fantastic job of this for me, understanding what the scientists want, how they work, how can we support them, putting these things in place. It's just been to be able to see and articulate this information has been vital. Without it, we're making things up. But when you have a model and you can see the next stages of what is happening, then absolutely we can then talk about what's going on we can uh, communicate it the scientists actually see this information and they understand what they do themselves they've had never had it written down before so the power of this is unbelievable data management we've got so many sources of data all over the place when every site has its own view and how it needs to be and where the information is so to bring that information together to analyze that information what does it mean do we need more info how does it need to be and creating it in a simplistic view of what is going on now the image on the right hand side you have there that's taken from my phone this is what josh has created for me on a particular initiative that's being worked on by both josh and vanessa i now can just take my phone out and see how many devices are being deployed. I can see the cost that's associated with the budget. I can see what's next. I can use this map to drill down into more details. I can, I can click on Sweden. I can go into a lab. I can see what is there. It's just that visibility is second to none. So this is why at the moment, Josh is leading my single source of truth. He is the only person in my team, I believe, when I talk facts and figures because it's based on other information. He is the go to person to create this and reach this together. So he's not doing this by himself. He's leading people from Chennai. He's got data analysts involved. He's got a, a solution architect or that he is leading this actually as a project. And that is the way it is. It's being done properly. And also Vanessa and Josh. Now they've taken another challenge. They both physically relocated homes to Cambridge and they're 
the tablet devices are going into the laboratory. So Vanessa's leading that for about 300 scientists. She's going to go and tell them what this device can do and the benefit it is and how they can have it in the lab, not just hand a device over. This is proper, great, exceptional standard of service. And Josh is also leading the laboratory instrument refresh. So we've got about 60 to 70 instruments within the laboratories that need updating with their PCs and new software and it alters the workflow, it changes the, the, the time it's spent on the scientists in these areas. So these are busy people in a COVID environment, he's got to build those relationships and get in and have this challenge. So he's leading his team in there. So what you think may be new emerging talent is absolutely you stretch these people you stretch this team to do more and they just take more on with their pride and professionalism and everything else so this is why i'm such an advocate yeah they never let me down at all they have great belief in what they do and we're here to support those through it next slide please so why do i invest you know my time and effort and being here today because like i say i'm working on the covid initiatives at the moment so it's a national priority, but this is how much I believe in the young talent coming through from Grace and the benefit it's given me within Digital Lab. And this is going to be underpinned because I, Mel will be able to help me out on this. We're recruiting certainly two more people from, from the Grace team to come into the programme because they're just the right people, the right experience, the energetic, the passion and desire. And most importantly, they do a great job. It is that simple. So the quality of their work is exceptional. They go in there, they're young, they're learning, they're new and they get the feedback and they just grow and develop. So absolutely worth the energies to provide the feedback into them. Motivation, absolutely. Go anywhere, do anything. Glass is half full. Happy to have a glass, to be honest. Yeah, they really appreciate it. They want to go out and do things. That is how passionate they are about things. Personal pride. This is an absolute killer for them. Yeah, they they put so much of themselves into their work that yeah, with feedback control or whatever, it can seem to hurt them. But they just want to grow and learn and they 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 just want to do the best. There is that desire to do good. Also, as well, exception of change. This is what programs deliver. We bring change to people. They help this journey and communicate to people what change is, why we need to do it how it happens and they are the front line of this change and it's a message some people long in the tooth like myself may not want to hear but it's they help and they bring that across understanding innovation here's another one from my point of view we are using social media we're using new technologies new capabilities that the likes of myself shouldn't understand not i know they exist they're out there but to want to be able to do this and to be involved in the cutting edge they are part of our innovation teams. The new ideas, no idea is a bad idea. Let's get it out there and let's see if it's possible. Can it help people? Also brings a balance to the team because you can have too many senior people. You can have too many people that have been in an environment for too many years. Yeah, you know, we never do it this way. We always do it that way. We can't get that balance right. You need to have a, a team of scientists and science and technology coming together. Without that, you don't have a balanced program. You will deliver what people, what you think they want, rather than asking them, being involved. And they bring that in. They bring a new, vibrant view of life and what can happen and the art of the possible. And they dream big. And that is exactly what we want to have that balance. And what I found, it's all about empowering them. It's it's not a babysitting job. If you want, if you want somebody to just filling a spreadsheet and at the end of every week, you get a nice status report, looks lovely, great, but you don't need the team, the skill set that you can get through Grace to come and do that. You know, these, these are about giving people challenges. They learn, they grow. So you take them from the, the, the management office and then you start to put them into the to more deliverable environment and, and talking to the scientists. and you know what we push them all over the world we stick them on airplanes we go to different locations it's not just a desk job it is that energy that vibrance and let them do it and you know what they will do it you learn you set them up for success don't give them the impossible task they're, yeah, they're for other people they're for myself to deliver but the ones you can do you're there to support you set them up and it's that permutation there it is a fantastic way to be 
And finally, most important to me is throughout my career, I'd say 28 years in the industry, other people have spent time with me and have set me up to do well and entrusted me to do things. My first program or my first project within the pharmaceutical industry was a company called 3M Healthcare, working on the first non-CFC asthmatic inhaler production line for a little known company called Astra. That's before they even became AstraZeneca. So I've understood this world, I've understood this environment. So I want, I see, you know, I don't know if these guys will take it as a compliment. I see me in them. I see that, you know, me as a younger person that wants to be able to do it and see that journey. And I want to try and break down those barriers for them, give them the opportunities, knowing it's, it's in a supported environment and part of a team where they're valued, they're not just a number. And that's why it's important to me to give that back because people gave it to me. Now, next slide, please. So <clears throat> I am singling out Josh on this one. I do apologise to Josh, but Curtis and also Vanessa have had the same sort of experience. I could go through all their journeys with you, but you know, looking at time, I thought we'd pick on Josh on this one. So Josh joined as part of the PMO team. He was the first person that met me when I went to the Macclesfield site on my after being with the company nearly two whole weeks. And so he was saying he was open, he was flamboyant, he was there, he was you know, telling me all that was going on and what was happening. So you could see instantly that, you know, I didn't know who was from Grace then. I'm just thinking, I'm glad this is the sort of person in my team that I can deal with. And so as we're taking over the programme to think, you know, what is our new way of working when I took over the reins of being the programme manager? Then how can I do this? So it was just myself and Josh. We went to we went to another quiet area of the building. There was a big whiteboard and we were just thinking and talking out loud. What's working? What's not working? And we spent two hours in this when we were drawing this up and we came back with this model of we've got five work streams. That's what the problem is. And you know, there were three there, but they were too big. We needed to break them down. So we had this approach and then said, well, talking to the scientists, they the whole thing about experiments is to do a proof of concept. Does this work? And so that's where we came up with. Let's talk in their language, because if you talk to IT people, you lose the will to live. It's all technical and scientists don't understand that. And you've broken that bridge. But start talking in their language. We came up with a proof of concept pilots and rollout. And that is what we've created a whole schedule to deliver. Then we started to you know, look at that as a process and then Josh took it on himself to reintroduce the quality management aspects. Well, we know what the AstraZeneca framework is about and how we deliver. So was every project doing the same thing? And you know, Josh created the model of, you know, this is what they're supposed to do in this phase and then the next phase. And he was holding senior people accountable you need to do this, you're behind on this one. And having those open conversations and, and leading by example on the quality front, setting the standards for others to follow. And this is a young person that is supposed to be, you're supposed to be nurturing and action. He was leading and telling what you would historically class as more senior people, how to do the right thing. And then from this, we then time to stretch Josh. We put him as part of the digitising experiment write-up team, which is going into the laboratories, which is seeing the scientists, talking to them, having this breakdown here, telling them this is the device for them and building those relationships. Now, he did such a good job of this. We stuck him on a plane, flew into Boston, and that's where he lived for three months as part of this. So all I say is anybody who wants to you know, be part of the Grace team and be part of that, be prepared for these opportunities. We can come and we can take you to all these places. You do a great job. We're investing in you back and then you have new life changes and experience. In fact, we're lucky to get Josh back from the US. He loved it out there so much. Even with the COVID, he was he, the COVID virus locked him down over there. So it was a new way of working. He was away from home. He was in a strange environment, but he was doing such a great job in communicating and making our life of deployment into the, the, the Waltham facility in Boston the perfect solution. And then when he came back, we forced him home because visas run out and all these things. Um, he became part of a new team called the Innovation Workstream, the new ideas, the creative thinking. And this has just been set up between Neil and Josh, who's Neil is the Workstream lead. 
and they and if you know anything with inside AstraZeneca we have the the workplace posts and they're on it every day they're posting things of what they're doing where they've been great like communicating telling people what is happening so for being a victim of his own success Josh is now he has got a whole project himself he is accountable to me for it he has to report in to say where he is, what he's doing. He has budget control, he buys equipment, he's got a team of people to help him roll this out. He is fully delivering an initiative that was invested in by one of the most senior people within our organisation. We've got an investment of 2.4 million to spend this year, and he is accountable to deliver his changes within to Cambridge, into the UK by the end of this year. So he's up sticks again, he's now living in Cambridge, he's moved again, he's taken on the challenge with Gusto, and I'd like to say he's living the dream, but I'll leave that up to Josh to tell you if that's the case or not. So just final slide for me, please. So I just wanted to put on here, and this is the time to embarrass them. So revenge is always sweet with myself. Now, and this, this is a statement of fact, it's not me being gushing in any way, shape or form, but Vanessa, Kirsten, Josh, who have been there since my day one within the programme, the digital lab would not be the success it seemed to be today without you guys. And that is just a factual statement. You know, you've added so much value you've given to the team. And then, you know, your the experience you've given me is mean that I can recruit more people with confidence through Grace to come and work on my programs because my programs are big. They are cumbersome. They are high profile. This is what good looks like to me. And that's all I ask for my teams and then so thank you. You know, totally appreciated from me to you guys. And that's my brief view of what is going on in my world at the moment. So thank you for listening. Oh, thank, thank you so you much, Phil. So that was brilliant. Um, it's really it's refreshing, refreshing to hear such a passionate account of you know what it means what to work with the Grace team. team. And once again, once again we're thrilled that we get to we work get to with work you as part of Digital Lab. Digital so thank you. Um, we're now going to move into our Q&A segment, so I'm going to scoot across to the Q&A bar on the right. For anybody that hasn't submitted any questions, you know, please feel free to do so. But Phil, the first question we've had so far is, do you see the skills you will need in the future change across the pharma industry and indeed within AstraZeneca? Um, I would say yes. Um, with regards to Digital Lab, we've learned a lot. Uh, of what do we need? And the most important thing is to have a balance within your team. Classically, you see an IT project is here is your solution. IT will put you a new icon on your desktop and you're supposed to use this. And how do the you know, how do the scientists know about this? And also to sort of share that skill set. We, so we've learned that the center of the science and the science and the technology triangle is the workflow. It's all about understanding what is happening. So, so that is the science. We do this, then we do that, then the next step, then the next step. And only by visualizing that with sort of business analytics, you can see where the data falls. This is what we're capturing. This is, we can, you know, does the lab of the future have scientists? You could be that controversial. You know, we could, we could you know, simulate any of the results from previous tests. And if we added this, this could be your outcome. And the data flows all are there. So it's about data, it's about artificial intelligence, but all based around the science workflow bringing these skill sets in and this is what you know Vanessa with her area the business analyst side of looking at the process if you show that to a scientist they understand it they see their areas that they can improve so our work is empowering them with their decision making and we can look at this could save time we know the length of time these things take to change and adopt so fundamentally yeah, the lab of the future will be based around workflows of bringing different things in working in that different way working you know, in our world today, working remotely, having all this information at your fingertips, wherever in the world you are. So it's that location thing, it's perfect. The skill set is all around understanding the workflow, understanding the data and the skill sets that bring all that together. Absolutely, thanks Phil. We're getting some great questions in, so thank you everybody. So I'm um, gonna move on to my next one, uh, which is how long did the Scientific Equipment Lifecycle Asset Management Programme take to deploy, Phil? Oh, how long did that take to deploy? Asset management, this is a ever-changing thing. So asset management, we have got, and Curtis will tell me off here if I get this wrong, I think we have in the regions of nine 
systems where we get information from from different labs and th these are big sap systems that are cumbersome beasts that we're trying to get this information on but to bring all that information into this our proof of concept this was based in bringing this into to start with just an excel spreadsheet of what we can do and then visualizing that off the top so the first part of that must have taken two to three months just to get that sort of visible model of it now the data was always suspect because it's always being updated always changing we're getting new live feeds coming into this and and josh has now created not josh curtis has created the a, a database that sits under this to bring all this in so it's an ongoing feast which we have far greater confidence now at the data that's in there we're still improving it's still ongoing but it is now becoming a way of life so it lives it breathes it's sustainable it's going forward um, so the initial proof concept three months the next we're working on is about six months time and then it will be rolled out and this will become our source of truth and it's not just about the information within the instruments and that area but i'm using it also to manage my programs i know what's happening there so we've got these different dashboards it tells me what is happening with all my initiatives and this has all been created from my single source of truth that's you know been created by the grace team yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Phil. Um, moving on to the next question that's come through then. So, Phil, how and at what stage are the scientists involved in the project's workflow? And was this challenging in any way? <laughs> was it challenging? <laughs> yes, is the answer to that one. Um, straight away, we weren't doing it originally with Digital Lab. We had a, a single scientist leading on what we're doing. Um, but we've proven with the first couple of projects is our first task in our early discovery or proof of concept stage was to go and talk to the scientists, go straight into the labs, have those conversations so we can understand what they do. Because it's hard, if you have a conversation, you're not writing things down, we can't have those measures, it's to have that baseline. But dealing with the scientists, and they were extremely busy and too important in some situations, but as soon as the ones that were getting engaged saw the benefit, it's just spread. On some of our initiatives, I, you, for me to tell the scientists, this could be fantastic for you. But a scientist to tell another scientist, this is fantastic, they listen. And that is what happened. Yeah, you know, to be able to put these things in the processes in the within in Vanessa's area, we're talking to the scientists about the help that they need. They just want that. I just needed to give this to you and to be, know what happens in the background. That visibility has just been perfect. But absolutely very important until they see the benefit, and that's where building those relationships. And this is what the team has done exceptionally well. It's, it's gone in there and just treated them as normal human beings and had those conversations and not being you know and just building that bridge between the areas yeah completely and would you say phil that you know that co-collaboration that you've got going with the scientists you know and the it team is something that's quite unique within astrazeneca it's growing in strength it's one thing that we've taken you know the lessons we learned within this within this land we took straight to the covid center and the initiative there it's because scientists don't normally follow a structured methodology they are creative individuals free thinking and, and non-structured around a lot of their work from an it point of view we come with a method but so we've had to we've had to compromise the rigidity of our methodologies versus talking to the scientists and being a bit more flexible and bringing the site into it as well do we alter buildings around do we relocate people do they look after the instruments rather than it and it's having those relationships and uh, absolutely it's there is strengths within all these relationships to do that and those lessons learned have got to be there for the future and it underpins exactly all the work that we do yeah, brilliant. Thanks, Phil. Um, I think the next question is from one of my lovely ex-colleagues at AstraZeneca, so I will uh, yeah, link you two together afterwards. But Seema is asking, are you able to share some of the digital training and the learning approaches that you're taking or thinking of implementing? Absolutely. We, Because training in the communications, it's the classic thing, a simple thing, giving somebody a new device. So I'm talking to you by my tablet. I've got one of the digital lab devices here. And it's normally, I was given my laptop and I work within IT, so I'm supposed to know what's going on. I don't know the benefits, I don't know that side, but the proactive way of handing a device over for two hours, 
we get that is the handover it's a different experience we tell have you thought about facial recognition have you thought about how you mount it and where you position it in the lab this is where it fits in your workflows and then we don't take their old device off them we then let them free with this for about a month and then they go away and they like it and then yeah we can't get the new device off them you know that's what they want that's the benefit they've taken into the labs we've got new creative things so it's it can be clean simply going in and out laboratories a, a new way of learning that new way of training remotely and so you know, we're doing it around the world at the minute so it doesn't matter what location we've got our online training and this is how it needs to be so we've adapted you know we've been impacted by covid we've thought in a different way in fact actually at this moment in time josh and vanessa should be in the us delivering the devices out there at the moment so they can blame the pandemic rather than myself on that one, but that is the journey that they would be back on doing. For sure. And I suppose on that note, Phil, is there been any other imp implications for you and your programme, you know, that has been impacted by COVID-19? Absolutely. So we so we, we turned this uh, programme around from a, a programme that was red to one that was green. And we had the first quarter of the year delivering the programme, having the success, getting the communications. We had a plan through to the middle of next year. Then all of a sudden, I get a phone call on a, a Monday night, starting nine o'clock the next day. I'm dragged into the COVID programme, a handover the structure and having to reprioritise everything. What was going to help the scientists? So all our plans were in place. So everybody thought they knew what they were doing. It's all changed. The technology of remote access, so scientists can work from home and still run the experiments in the lab. That's one of our initiatives. This is how it all changed, that constant change in learning. And this is where you know, the team are so flexible and so fluid and see the requirement. This needs to change. We are going to add benefit, get more devices to the, you know, you know, the scientists were still running in the laboratories. So the team are going on to site when other people were being safe at home, going into the laboratories, going out there, such as the desire and passion to do that. So the principles were absolutely solid. But yeah, it was all written in pencil, as I often say. We rubbed it all out. We started again and now coming out of it. We're replanning again. We have a planning session next week to go to plan to the end of the year and then the rollout until the end of the programme, which is the middle of next year. For sure. Thank you. I'm just going to scoot back because it looks like I've missed one of the early questions. I, I only had one job, so apologies. Um, how, it's a bit of a technical question, Phil. So how do you drive automated data handling throughout your labs and link between various technologies provided by different vendors? And a secondary question, what laboratory information management systems do you use to achieve this? Yeah, well, we're actually come, going through a proof of concept at this moment in time. We've gone external through a request for information just to sort of see what was out in the market. This is about innovation and this is where the team are going to be dragged into this particular initiative. So this is the Create and Accessible Lab Data. So we scoured the market. We've identified a key third party player that is looks like that they have the interfaces to a vast majority of the instruments. So the last time we looked, AstraZeneca was a pharmaceutical company. They're not an internal software development company. Um, so we're looking to the market specialist to help us with this journey, to take the data and how we can collate it, to make it more searchable, to make it identifiable. We're adding metadata to it. Sounds like I know what I'm talking about. Um, <laughs> then from that, it's going into object stores and it's going into our cloud where we've got this rich data lake of information where the data analysts analytics and artificial intelligence can sit and have a field day and create the theoretical models around the, you know, the experiments that go on to give predicted and forecasted results on certain combinations of trials and anything else to see if this modeling works and how that can help and stimulate that. So currently until we've embedded and been successful, then that, that supplier will remain confidential. Um, but yeah, they're out there, the people that are providing it and uh, we're very confident it looks good. We're trying it in imaging spaces, we're doing it in mass spectrometry, we're doing it's in high throughput screening and all these different places. So hopefully we've got a, a supplier that can do the vast majority. But collaboration, that is a way forward. You know, where there's gaps, we will fill those. We work with other organisations in the pharmaceutical industry. We're happy to share that. The, the days of overall secrecy have gone, you know, working on the COVID stuff. It's, we were there with GSK and with the university. We all know each other. We all we know what's out there. We know the field, and we know 
I'm not sure why, but yeah, we we look like we have a solution to you know, to improve our data lake with all the source data. Brilliant. I mean, what's the phrase? Is it collaboration is in, competition is out? I think that's the yeah that's futuristic the way of thinking. <laughs> we it's love a buzzword. For all because we, we're focused on the patients. That's why we're here. This is why we do this: is to help help the people who need us most. And if we can do that collaboratively, then absolutely, that's the right thing to do. Yeah, brilliant. OK, thank you. So moving on to our next question then. So, Phil, how attractive is it that you can transition um, the tra Sorry, I'll repeat that. I'll put my teeth back in. Phil, how attractive is the transition element of the GRACE um, model to you at AZ? So bringing and potentially moving these guys into FTEs? Excellent. So, yes, this is why we look into you as we stretch people. It is that transition. So if you identify it, it's almost like the world's longest job interview. You come in, you prove yourself. We we tend to keep what we like. And that's a general philosophy within our organization. If you've got good skilled resource, we've got a mountain of work at the moment. You know, we've got so much on. We're just early science. We've got late science, we've got the operational teams, and we all collaborate. And when we can hear that somebody has a success in one area. The hardest part is, you know, for me, you know, can I retain the team? Is somebody going to go, well, you can come and work for me in this area? It is it is that open and that is what AstraZeneca is about. It is about growth and encouragement and it's a great place to work. That is one of our aspirations is to be and we want people to come you know, through this process. We want them to like the idea. You know, our jobs board is full of you know, opportunities and that there and this is, you know, you can come and you can prove yourself and I will happily give anybody in this, this team a solid reference if I can't retain them and take them to my next initiative. You know, it's absolutely there. It is, it is a viable, absolute viable track into the organisation. Yeah, perfect. Thank you. Um, moving on to the next question that we've had in and again, thank you everybody for submitting such great questions. What would you say, Phil, are the most important attributes that your analysts bring to the digital lab programme? The skill set is unquestionable, but it's the personal nature. I don't know how you select people to come into Grace. It is that I have you know, been a programme manager. I have a lot of sayings and before COVID, one of mine was have you shaken their hand? And that means that have you met this person? Have you built that relationship? Have you physically seen them? They're not just somebody on a Teams chat. They're not somebody that's at the bottom of an email and you something was misinterpreted have that conversational and the personable approach, those sort of levels of communication. Now, that is what I've really loved. And I, I don't know how you select them because of that, or that way of working, but everybody that comes here has that ability to talk and to communicate and articulate what is going on and be very personal about it. There's no egos in this. Everybody is a level, certainly within my team. You know, we, we all talk to each other. The worst thing they hear from me is, uh, I've had another idea and then they'll go and run into the corner and go and I'm not going to do this. But it's yeah, it is that way. It is that being themselves. That is the most simple. You know, the technical skill, anybody can have that tick that box. But if that person doesn't have that collaborative way of working, that to me is, you know, I say you can't buy it, but yeah. you guys select it from somewhere. Yeah, we have a bit of a joke, Phil, internally where we call them the Grace Unicorns um, yeah. because that's what we're looking for. You know, we're looking for the right attributes, that positive energy, you know, technical soft skills that, you know, create that full package that you've just described. So, yeah, that's a bit of a joke that we have internally with our team. Um, I'm really conscious of time getting to the fact that it's 1344. So I think I'll move into our final question, if that's OK, Phil. Okay. So, um, which trends uh, do you think will bring most impact and can you share some of the key challenges and current initiatives you have ongoing? Thanks. Uh, certainly trends. Trends is around workflow, definitely. It's about understanding how the science works with regards to having the visibility of what steps are there and aligning your information to that so you can model and create and predict things. You know, the lab of the future, I've heard it mentioned a few times, Theoretically, you can have automation, lots of experiments going on. You can know the results of the experiments before the experiment has concluded. It means you can focus on 
areas of greater probability. So you put that into the terms of lung disease, cancer, or any of the things that we're looking at to predict that this is probably going to be a, a success and this one probably not before you make that investment. So more cost effective, more, more creative, more yeah, just more everything. It's just that passionate in that area. So yeah, we're working on lots of different ideas. We're looking to the next stage of whatever Digital Lab 2 will be. The, you know, this to us is a pilot. We're looking, what do we roll out? We've got more ideas. We're working with our, our new research centre, our UK headquarters in Cambridge that have been built and been set up. We're coming into that area. High throughput screening, all these areas, full automation, bringing in the robots to do the more hazardous work and things like that. Absolutely, these are all the ideas. These are all on the radar, and that is where we're going to tomorrow. And there's more investment to follow on this from us. Brilliant. It's so exciting, and I honestly feel like we're thrilled that we get to be a part of that moving forwards as well. Um, I think prudent to finish on a, another big shout out to Vanessa, Curtis, and Josh because the work that they're doing, you know, as Phil's alluded to, is just phenomenal. Um, but I think we're going to need to wrap up there just due to time. So thank you so much to everybody that's took the time to join us today. Huge, huge thank you to Phil. Uh, that was just brilliant. I really enjoyed it. So hopefully everyone else did too. Um, we will be sharing today's webinar to either watch again or share wider you know we're open to any questions that anybody might have separately to this but for now take care everybody and thank you look after yourselves thanks guys